Today's technique for brake bleeding on a Honda XR600R can be used for most hydraulic brake applications. For this job we'll need DOT4 brake fluid, brake cleaner, gloves, and a MightyVac MV8000 automotive brake bleeder. Here is the setup for a leak-free brake bleed using the included attachments. We will also be using a Phillips screwdriver, an 8mm wrench, and paper towels to clean up any spilled oil. We begin by removing the front brake reservoir cover. This one includes a metal cap, plastic middle section, and a rubber seal. Brake fluid is hygroscopic, meaning it absorbs water, therefore it is important to make sure your rubber seal is in good condition so that no external water can get in. This brake fluid is a little dark but is old and needs to be replaced. Air bubbles, water, and particle contaminants are not always visible but will nevertheless create squishy brake lever action. Here is the DOT4 brake fluid we will be using. It is best to start with a fresh bottle and to keep from spilling the brake fluid create a hole at the bottom to pour from and a smaller breather hole at the top. At the caliper, remove the bleeder valve nipple. Then grab the bleeder tool. We will use the suction created by this hand pump to pull old brake fluid down and out of the brake line. Attach the vacuum line onto the bleeder valve ensuring a nice snug fit. Before we drain any brake fluid down the line and out of the caliper through the bleeder valve, we will need to fill up the brake reservoir with fresh brake fluid. To keep air from coming in through the reservoir and into the brake lines, we must never let the reservoir fall below the level where brake fluid goes into the master cylinder. Before unscrewing the bleeder valve, pump up the vacuum to between 10 and 20 psi or about 10 to 15 pumps. This will ensure no old brake fluid or air can escape back into the brake line. Slowly open the bleeder valve like a regular bolt until you see brake fluid slowly flowing. At the brake reservoir, we can see oil being drained down through the system. Since we must always keep the reservoir at the top filled, eventually you will need to close the bleeder valve and refill the brake fluid reservoir. If you have a second person handy, you can do these simultaneously. First, create vacuum pressure. Second, open bleeder valve. Third, allow old oil to be extracted. Fourth, close bleeder valve. And fifth, refill brake reservoir. When you begin to see fresh fluid come out, you know that you have successfully flushed the brake line. Okay, when you're finished with the caliper, tighten up the bleeder valve and replace the bleed valve nipple. Okay, now we're going to bleed the master cylinder. This is normally done first, but we started with the caliper for demonstrative purposes. Remember to always read your specific service manual before starting any project. Go ahead and remove the bleeder valve nipple, then hook up your wrench around the bleeder valve. Using the brake bleeder, we are going to follow the same procedures that we did with the caliper, making sure the level in the reservoir doesn't drop below the one quarter mark for this particular job. Fill the reservoir whenever there is room, and always keep the area clean of excess brake fluid because it does eat paint. Alright, we're going to create a vacuum again, open the valve, remove unwanted brake fluid, close the valve, and once again refill the reservoir. Eventually you'll see the fluid in the reservoir begin to look clean again. That's when you can top it off above the lower mark and clean up the area real good make sure there's no residual brake oil. Slippery brake levers are never a good thing. Make sure you have all the pieces to your reservoir cap and put it back in place. When you're all done, the brake lever will feel a bit squishy, but not to worry though, a few pulls and it will tighten up. Remember, brake fluid should be replaced at least every two years.